David, yep. um, how old are you? 46. 46. David, how long have you been homeless for? Three months now. Three months. How did it all start? How did it happen? Uh, basically, I come out of prison. Prison service didn't help you. None of them people in there help you. You come out, they expect you to come out, find accommodation. And yeah. basically, they release you. If you ain't got accommodation, you haven't got anywhere to go. You're on your own. So as soon as you come out, you're fending for yourself. The only thing they offer you is like uh, hostels and that. But yeah. some of them ain't around here. You have to go in there, you have to be there at a certain time. It's hard if you've got no money, you can't travel there. Mm. Obviously, they want to put you in hotels around here. But with the COVID situation, that right, is a hard situation. Like, it's impossible. The council don't want to help you. Huh? I've been in this borough, in, it, it, they just don't want to help you. Huh? They say, oh, if you go and find a, a landlord that will take DHS or DSS, wherever it is, they will pay the deposit. Mm. If you try and find a landlord out there that's going to take the DSS, it's mm. impossible. They don't take the SS no more. So, so would you say that the prison service, when they let you go, do they know that you're going to be homeless? or they know? They yes, they know. Us? Yes, they know. They still let it happen? And they still let it happen. Um, talk to us about your life before you became homeless. I was a manager of Quick Fit. Okay. Um, I lost my mum when I was 22. Sorry to hear that. I then turned to drugs. I got myself clean. Then I went back to drugs when I got told of seeing my sister and that had cancer. Then I lost my dad. And basically I turned to drugs again. I got myself clean. I'm now with R3 now, going through the system again. And trying to get my life back on track. It's just the accommodation side. And uh, you know when you became homeless at the prison, you ended up on the streets. Talk to us about your first day, your very first day when you became homeless. Describe to us that day. <sighs> I had nothing, no blankets, no, I had one set of clothing, didn't know where I was going, didn't know what I was going to do, just, I felt like I was in a black hole, just, yeah. I was, and um, who, who do you have in your family? Right now i just got my sister. Did your family, when you became homeless, not try and help you? They didn't want to know because of the drug side, oh. so they disowned me because of the drugs. And what about any friends from the past? Did they not try and help you? All my friends that I had when I was working, obviously my pals, they found out I was on the heroin, they cut their strings, they obviously mm. they've got children that which I respect, so yeah, they just basically... And uh, what do you find the toughest part to be about being homeless? Finding somewhere safe to sleep. Being safe, the mm. cold, that, that's the toughest bit. Yeah, so, you know, in the past Getting few days it's been really, really cold. How have you been coping? Lighting fires. Seriously, lighting fires under that car park and wrapping up as much as you can wrap up, bro. Where, where do you currently sleep? Uh, I'm behind Dixie Chicken, behind that uh, Ilford train station, in basically. The, in the car park? In the car park, on a mattress. And when it's cold and you wake up, how do you feel when you wake up in the cold? Imagine yourself being in the freezer. Waking up in the freezer, basically. That is exactly how it is shivering. Your teeth chattering, yeah, uh, like you can drink 20 cups of tea and it's still, you're still freezing cold. Is there any people on the streets who have helped you? I don't really mix with them because I'm trying to get myself clean. Mm. So I don't want to be around them people because all they care about, when they get money, all they're going to do is buying drugs. Mm. Whereas I'm not, you know, I'm buying food or if I can raise enough money, I'll go and pay for a hotel. Yeah. Which I don't, I went to the Park Hotel in Barking, cost me £30, pound, but do you know what, it was the best night sleeping shower I ever had. So, you know, from your life, before you became homeless and when your life was, in your mind, maybe perfect, what do you miss the most from that time? My family, my children, my security. Like, there's the, just the lovingness of being in the family, you know? Like, I, had a, I, had a, I had my daughter, I had a girlfriend, I had, well, I had a wife. And, yeah, it just went downhill. Like, when you're homeless, it's just you lose everything. You lose your pride, your self-respect. You have to ask people for things you've never asked to. It's embarrassing we're asking people for things. It's just not nice. Where is your, your kids now? Um, I've got one that's just been adopted because of the drugs. And the other one is with the baby mum. And when was the last time you saw your kids? Ten years ago. Ten years ago. It's been a long time. Yeah, very long time. You know our viewers that are watching this video and they have a family. Is there any message you'd like to give to them that people that have a family? Just keep them safe and, and, and look after them because that's the only thing you've got in life. Mm.
as a family? As a family. Unless, 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 if you ain't got family, you got nothing. That's powerful. That's the truth. Family means a lot. Yeah, that's the truth. If you've got no, no family, mate, what have you got? Mm. And uh, being on the streets, what, what's the one thing you're the most grateful for? People stopping and giving you food. Yeah. And a hot drink, just or conversation. What's the nicest thing someone has done for you? Give me £10 this morning. Okay. So since you've been homeless, that's been the nicest thing, yeah? Yeah, that and just stopping to see how you are. And that like, a lady come and bought me food the other night with a little child. I thought yeah. that was uh, just out of this world, you know. Wow. She, she cooked it her actual self and bought it to me. Okay. And I was like, wow, do you know what I mean? It's wow. like, people don't, like, you don't, like, when you're homeless, you don't, like, you think, there isn't no good people out there uh, until that happens. Until that happens. Do you know? So it's nice for people to do something. Yeah, like when nice. someone does something like that, or they just come up to you and bring you a cup of tea, or and, and just say you're right, like uh, I was like, you know, just that in itself. And what's the meanest thing someone has done to you? Spat at me. Hmm. Spat at me. That's. It's horrible people out there. Isn't yeah, it? you don't like that. And that's when you go low because you think there ain't no nice people out there, you know. Hmm. So you know when you have those low moments and you feel down, what gets you through the tough times? I think about my children. Okay. All those happy memories. Oh yeah, that's all I do. Think about my children. A lot of homeless people that we've interviewed, they said that it's the memories that keep them going from it the past, the, isn't it? the happy memories. Yeah, that's it. Like, if you don't start thinking, if you start thinking bad and low, you can end up dead. Mm. That's the truth of the matter. If you start thinking like that and you start thinking, well, my life's going nowhere, you have to, you, you'll end up dead. That is the truth. I know two of my pals have ended up dead. Mm. Kyle died last week. What's the homeless guy. He died What's last week. Kyle. Okay. All his organs failed okay. through the coldness. And, uh, and then another guy died two months before that. So okay. just, a lot of you've got to keep people strong. dying on the streets as well. Yeah, because it's so cold. It's so cold. And, um, you know, you said that you were a manager in a retail shop. If an opportunity came again where someone wanted to hire you, do you feel like you would, you would take that? I'd take it in a second. Yeah. I'd take it in a second. I was a manager of my own store, man. It was quick fix, a big company. Mm. Obviously, yeah, it affected me bad when I lost my mum. It affected me bad, but things happen in life. Yeah, and things happen. And, you know, some things you don't have control over. Exactly. If you had a magic wand, what would your wand wish be? To have a life, a normal life. What is a normal life? Having a house, not being on drugs, doing normal things what people do, going to work, coming home, seeing your children. Mm. That's a normal life to me, spending time with your family. That's a life. What does your future look like? Right now, your future is what you make it. And right now I'm trying to make my future better. I'm trying to get a house, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging with R3. So I'm opening the drug rehabilitation centre. Okay. So my, my my aim is like to stay clean. My daughter's gonna come looking for me in another five years time. Mm. I don't want to see me like this on the street. Mm. That's the one thing I don't. So yeah, I just want security. And the uh, final question to you is uh, people watching this video, what is your final message to the world out there? What would you like them to know about homeless people? Maybe that they don't know. Not every person, homeless person is bad. Not every person is bad. There is good homeless people out there, like myself. Just have a bit of respect for them. It's not their fault. There's a, there, there is a situation, there is a reason why they're homeless. Might be bad, might be good. But please, just have a bit of respect for the homeless. It's not our fault. You've got people that are coming into this country not being racist or anything like that, that are getting help, that are giving houses. You've got people like myself that have been in this country for 46 years in the same borough and they don't even help you. They won't even give you the time or day. That's what hurts. Because they won't, they won't help you. I've never had a council flat. I've never had my own place. Like, I've had to pay for it privately all the time. You know, it's so... Yeah, it's just give, give us a bit of respect. Completely. All right. Thank you so much for your time. So David, you said you've been homeless for a, for a while now, yep. and we just interviewed you. We had one of our um, social media followers who's given some clothes to you. Her name is Leah. What's your message to Leah for giving you these clothes? Thank you so much, Leah, for these. It's going to keep you nice and warm. Um, 
yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.